All right, so welcome everybody. Um, thanks for joining today. Uh, we're going to be talking about annotation starter assignments today. Um, <laughs> uh, thanks, Sue, for letting me know that you can hear me. Um, that's awesome. So I did ask everyone as they were coming in to let me know what their experience with hypothesis is. Um, so I'm going to share the results with that. It looks like we have people kind of all over the map today. Lots of people who have never used it and are not sure what it does. Um, some people know what it does, but they've never used it before. And then a couple of people that have a little bit more experience. So um, here's kind of how we're going to lay today out. Um, I'll talk about what hypothesis is for those of you who don't know what it is. Um, I'll talk about why maybe you should use hypothesis, why social annotation might be good. And then we'll talk about those annotation starter assignments. How can you actually prompt students to annotate? So I do want to warn you that the first half of this webinar is actually intended to be non-technical. We're just going to talk about hypothesis and social annotation in kind of a general sense, like why do you want to use hypothesis? And um, I did notice that most people who had registered for the session, about 80% of people um, are using Canvas as their learning management system. So at the end of the session, so about half an hour in, um, we'll wrap up the annotation starter assignment info, and then I will do a quick demo of how to set up a hypothesis assignment in Canvas if you're not familiar with how to do that. If you're using another learning management system, um, then that is also okay because we have lots of workshops coming up about how to set up hypotheses in those learning management systems. So that is um, a link to our workshops is in the text chat. So if you want to sign up for how to uh, use hypothesis uh, in your own learning management system, you can do that. And I'll also share some instructions on how you can do that if you just want to check out instructions on your own time. So if you could please put in the chat um, a quick intro of your name, um, you know, where are you coming from, what do you teach, uh, and hopefully we can address some of the people's disciplines um, in our session today. Please make sure, though, that you are sharing with everyone in the chat and not just hosts and panelists so everyone can see what you're talking about. Um, just so everyone knows, I'm not just like a random hypothesis, customer success team. I can't even say it. My name's Christy. I am from Southern New Jersey. So I am near Philadelphia. Um, so anyone that's in the neighborhood, everyone's answers are coming in. I don't know if I can read them that fast, but I'm in the Philly area. Um, so I just had lunch. I, don't, I know some of you maybe just had breakfast. Um, so thanks again for joining. And um Maybe, oh, I just saw a Rowan University. I'm about 45 minutes away, Bob, from Rowan. So nice to see some people that are close. Oh, Patricia's from Montclair. See some New Jersey representation. Very cool. Thanks everyone for participating. Um, and I just do also want to note that if you want to email our success team, if you need personal help with hypothesis, you can email our address here and um, we will get you connected with the correct person to assist you with getting hypothesis set up in your course. So let's first start, start off with what exactly is hypothesis? Because some of you are like, I signed up for the session and I don't really know what social annotation or hypothesis is. So here is what we are talking about. Basically, hypothesis lets you make your readings annotatable in your learning management system. So we work with Canvas, Blackboard, Brightspace, Moodle, um, and Sakai. And anything that you could potentially load into your learning management system or most things that you could load into that as a reading, your students can add annotations to that. Um, so I will show you exactly what that looks like. So here is what this actually looks like in a learning management system. When you open up a reading, which might be a PDF or a website in your learning management system that you've assigned to your students, um, the reading will show up on the left-hand side of the screen, and we'll have this annotation panel that's added to the right-hand side of the screen. So our my student annotations are showing up on the right here. And you can see that these student annotations are actually connected to specific pieces of text. So here the student has annotated actually a, a problem, um, an equation. And you can see when I hover over that student's annotation that that, uh, that equation is showing up as a different color. So 
the annotations are anchored to the text itself. And um, that makes the conversation very connected to the text. You can also see that we have something here that's showing that we have replies. So students can reply to each other in the annotations. Um, and you as the instructor can annotate and reply to students in the annotations. So we have um, students, you know, asking each other questions, answering each other. Um, so we can have threaded conversations in the annotations, kind of like a discussion board, but it's directly connected to the text. So it's a little bit more um, engaging and interactive than a discussion board. So if you have any questions about like what I'm looking at here, um, if you're not, since we're not, some people are not familiar with hypothesis, social annotation, that's kind of the basics of what we see. If you have any questions, please feel free to throw them in the chat. Um, so one of our team members can answer them for you. So we like to use social annotation here at Hypothesis um, because it makes reading active, visible, and social. It's like kind of our motto. Um, and just so you all know, I actually do teach um, my adjunct class at Rutgers, and I use Hypothesis in my uh, own courses. Um, and I have since 2019. Um, it makes reading active because it's asking the students to engage in the text in a way that they might not normally do uh, without this social annotation tool added. Uh, it makes reading visible in that when the students are adding annotations, their um, thought processes while they're reading become visible to you as the instructor. So if we go back to this example here, you can see Malika had questions about um, why the equation was set up the way it was. Maybe that question wouldn't be visible to you without this annotation tool being layered on, but um, hypothesis addition to your readings lets you see those questions as students have them. And then hypothesis makes reading social because as we saw, students can annotate a text collaboratively. They can annotate a text together. They can respond to each other. They're all kind of reading the text and reading each other's thoughts. Um, and it's making it a more social experience instead of having kind of like an isolated reading experience. So students might see, oh, other people have the same thoughts as I do. Um, or, you know, oh, they have that question too. And like, perhaps that could increase their sense of belonging. Um, Carolyn, we I, that's a good question in the chat about uh, accessibility barriers. And I think that um, if one of our success team members could drop a link into the chat about our accessibility, um, the annotations can be navigated using your keyboard and they do work with screen readers. Um, if they just have to, um, someone will have to read our instructions about how to use annotations with screen readers. So, Oh, great. Thank you, Wendy, for chiming in about JAWS. Other screen readers as well. Um, so I talked about uh, why I like to use hypothesis, but what are you hoping to get out of social annotation is what I um, am hoping to learn a little bit more. So I'm going to launch another poll and kind of use this opportunity to see what's going on in the chat too, because there's a lot happening. Um, if you could answer my poll about you know, what do you struggle with the most when, when it comes to students doing the reading in your class? I saw a question about annotating the syllabus. If your syllabus is a PDF, yes, we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to show some examples um, of other things as well. Yes, getting the students to read is a good point. Sydney. Hypothesis can help with that. So I'm going to give everyone another second to answer the question because I know you have to read a lot of answer choices for this one. Um, but yeah, I, Patricia, I also about your question about the syllabus. I have my students annotate the syllabus on the first day of class or for in my case, I teach an online class. So it's like the first week. Um, and I have a lot of success with that. So I'll link you to some sample instructions on how to do that. Oh, and thank you, Jason, for chiming in 
about your experience with that. That's awesome. Wow. Over a hundred students and a, a syllabus. That's amazing. Okay. So let's see what people think. What are you struggling most with with getting students to read? Knowing whether or not they did the reading, uh, about 10% of you. 40% of you are saying that getting the students to discuss the reading actively might be your biggest issue. So we're talk we'll talk about how we can kind of incorporate that in. Um, and then a lot of you are wondering what students most and least understood in the reading. And we can also talk about how hypothesis might be able to help with that as well. So thanks for participating in that poll. And let's go on. So why should you use social annotation? Uh, more, more ideas. We want to encourage metacognition with the reading. So students thinking about how they're thinking about the reading um, and having them annotate and read other people's annotations can help with that. Hypothesis can also help prolong reading engagement. So I think Sydney said in the chat, just getting students to read is a problem. And I don't know if some of you have noticed that getting students to keep reading through the semester can be even more of a problem. Um, so there was a case study done with using hypothesis once. Um, this is just one case study that was done. So it's not like huge research, but I do just want to point out that um, if you see uh, the green line is showing the readings that were used with hypothesis, the number of times that the students engaged with the ebook throughout the semester versus the readings um, that didn't use hypothesis, the number of times that the students engaged with the ebook that semester in the red there. So you can see that the students are engaging with the text longer through the semester consistently when they're using hypothesis versus when they might not be using hypothesis. So that's another great reason to use social annotation. And then like most of you said, you wanna know what students understand and don't understand in the text. So students can post their questions, which is a very clear way to see what students are understanding or not understanding. But I've heard a lot of faculty say also that they, kind of clue into what students don't get in the text by what students avoid annotating. So if there's a bit of text that nobody has annotated, that might be a good place to kind of hone in and spend more time on and see why students kind of avoided that space. Another great reason for using hypothesis and social annotation is to provide a space for all of your students to participate in the class. So like Jason said, he, in the chat, he had a hundred students asking questions about the syllabus. I don't know if you could get a hundred students to ask questions about the syllabus in a, like your live class. So you can hear from more people um, if you have all of your students participating in the assignment. And you can anchor your class discussions in these annotation assignments as well. So a lot of you mentioned in the poll that you want the students to more actively discuss your readings and letting them annotate and hypothesis and anchor their class discussions in their annotations lets them do that. They can kind of get their thoughts down on our digital annotations. You can bring them up in class. So you can bring the annotations up in the front of the room or, you know, whatever, and actually use those to drive your class discussion and increase engagement that way. So you can say like, oh, um, Becky, I noticed that you wrote this in your annotation. Um, can you elaborate on that? Or I saw that Jessica had a question about this. Um, does anyone else know the answer about that? Um, so these are really great ways to increase engagement in your in your own class as well. Uh, and then, so I want to give you some ideas on how to guide students' annotations, um, because I've been working with faculty for almost nine years, and everybody comes to me and they, like, have an outcome that they want, but they're not sure, like, how do I get there? So how can we prompt our students to annotate? How do we get them, like Sarah mentioned in the chat, do they answer one another? Or do I have to answer them all? No, they actually will answer each other. Um, so how can we prompt them to do that? And that's what kind of I want to focus on uh, in the next section. The first thing I want you to ask yourself and when you're thinking about how you'll instruct students to annotate is what is your actual purpose in your specific course for using social annotation? Do you want them to ask questions? Do you want to figure out 
Um, do you want them to engage with each other, participate with each other in a fully online class? Um, do you want to just see if they're doing the reading? So that can really, um, your purpose can really uh, focus uh, how you're gonna be guiding the students in, in annotating. Some things you'll wanna consider when creating your instructions for social annotation is how many times you're gonna have students use Hypothesis throughout the semester. I personally use it every single week in my class because I have an online class. So it's kind of like our class discussion. I know some instructors just use it three or four times a semester when they're having students read a academic article. Um, so it really depends, um, you know, how you're going to be using it, how frequently you might want to use it, um, how long your readings are and what types of readings you have. And then also, are you fully online? Are you face-to-face? -face? Do you have 100 students in your class or do you have 10 students? All these things can impact how you might guide your students in um, annotating the readings. So I'm gonna go through some specific ideas here that might be able to get you started. I do wanna note that in the slide deck, each of the next slides have access to full assignment instructions already created for you. So you can, again, access the slide deck using the link I'm putting in the chat, and I will also email it out to everyone. You can click on those icons and it will bring you to pre-created instructions that you can copy and paste into your course, or you can edit them. Like you can, always, you, know, you can adapt them to what works for your course, but it's a great place to get started. So lots of people have talked about this already in the chat. Start by having your students annotate the syllabus in your class. And yes, we have instructions on how you can have your students annotate the syllabus. You have a place to set expectations. Um, you can provide a space, as Jason mentioned in the chat, for students to ask questions about the syllabus. And I also like annotating the syllabus because it gives the students an opportunity to practice annotating for the first time. So they haven't used hypothesis before, um, maybe, maybe they have, but uh, in many cases they won't have used it before. Uh, annotating the syllabus gives them an opportunity to um, just kind of get used to the tool and, um, you know, try it out for the first time and diagnose any potential issues. Uh, Stephanie asked in the chat, can students annotate a simple syllabus? So yes, I think um, I have my students annotate my syllabus and I think mine is a, a bit shorter, probably only like five pages or so. And I still have my students annotate. So you could always ask students, um, break them into groups perhaps, or um, ask them to look for different themes. Um, which you can bring in some of these other ideas I'm going to get into. Um, and then Nadia asks, can you annotate a liquid web-based syllabus? Uh, if it's on one single web page that you have a public URL to, yes. If the syllabus is broken up into multiple web pages, um, hypothesis can only be connected to one URL per assignment. So um, if you have a syllabus in mul like multiple links, then that could create an issue. Another great way to use hypothesis is to guide your students through, through the reading itself. Um, so you can model the annotations by annotating the text on your own. Um, so I, I'll show you a quick example of that here. Um, in my own class, there are, are a couple of articles that I um, go in and pre-annotate for my students uh, so I can kind of point them to specific things. Um, I'll give them questions like this one here. Um, have you seen arguments uh, arguing the opposite of this? Uh, what characteristics do you think would make a profession shift from masculine to feminine, feminine to masculine? So I'll kind of give them ideas to think of for certain readings. Don't I don't do this for every reading, but if there's a reading that's particularly dense or you want them to focus in on specific areas, um, you can have them uh, answer your, your annotations or model annotating for them. Uh, it's also a great time to open the reading for questions, outside resources, and other connections. And again, you'll see specific instructions are linked to each of these slides here. Um, and 
these readings um, or hypothesis readings give students the opportunity to bring other resources in, whether they're talking about experiences from their own life, um, whether they're linking to outside web pages, or they are embedding YouTube videos or images in their annotations, which they can do, um, or if they're talking about things they're learning in other classes, it really allows you to expand where the reading is going because these um, annotations can be go beyond what the actual reading is saying. You can also ask students to practice key skills related to problem solving. So the um, the assignment that is linked to this slide is specifically geared towards more STEM-like courses. So if you want students to do things like clarify notation and syntax, um, find important information for solving problems, or kind of paraphrase these technical or difficult passages in their own words, that can be helpful as well. Another idea, especially if you have a larger course, is to use different group roles to encourage different types of annotations. So you can have students um, have take different roles in annotating, have someone play the devil's advocate, have another student um, be the questioner, have another student be the connector. Again, there's specific instructions linked on the slide here. So that is one way that you can kind of make sure that students are annotating about different things. Another idea that I really like that doesn't come up so much with faculty, like they don't, it's not necessarily the first thing they think of is to have students annotate course documents beyond the syllabus. So you could have them annotate things like instructions for an assignment or study guides. Um, and that can help pinpoint um, perhaps where students are misunderstanding like project instructions, or they can collaborate on a study guide and bring in outside resources or reference where to find information related to specific um, portions of the study guide. And it can also let you as the instructor see where students might not be understanding some instructions or study guide prompts. Another uh, way that things can get pretty creative and annotating is to have students tag, uh, use tags in their assignments. Um, so if you get comfortable with annotating, I might suggest you try annotating first, just like an easy annotation assignment, like annotating the syllabus, but you can have students add these tags to their annotations. Um, let me go to an example. So you'll see in one of these annotations here that I have these labels at the bottom of the annotation or tags. So students can actually add tags to annotations um, that make the annotations easier to kind of sort through um, and find specific topics, identify themes or questions. So you can use agreed upon tags for specific themes, or you can have students tag like the word question or your name um, if it's a question that you'd like to address. I would also encourage multimedia in your assignments. So um, there's a link on how to add multimedia into annotations later on in this deck, but you can add you can ask students to add images or embed videos to their annotations to help further illustrate concepts. So again, this can really help think like your students go beyond what just the text is saying and create reading as a very multimodal experience. Um, so Christy asked in the chat, basically the same as using the comments feature in a Word document. It's very similar to that. The big difference is that it's just right in your LMS, so you can open the assignment in your learning management system. The students don't have to sign into anything extra. They just open the reading in the learning management system, and they can start annotating, and then you can grade it within the learning management system as well. Um, so some resources for getting started. Uh, and again, in just a couple minutes, I'll show you how to do this in Canvas for those of you who are in the Canvas learning management system. Um, but I do have instructions for the other uh, learning management systems linked here as well. Um, so I have Canvas links here. We have instructions on how to create a hypothesis-enabled reading linked. And then we also have instructions for Blackboard, 
Brightspace, Moodle, and Sakai. Uh, Thomas asks if there's an easy way to add a video to an annotation. Actually, Thomas, adding a video is basically as easy as adding text, as long as it's a YouTube or Vimeo video. You would just copy and paste the video URL into the annotation and it embeds. Um, so before I get into how to add this in Canvas, I just want to go through a couple of resources that you'll have access to as uh, Hypothesis partners for those of you who are not going to stick around for the Canvas demo. So here are some resources here. I mentioned that link to adding images, videos, and links to the annotation. So the instructions are linked on this slide if you want to learn more about that or provide instructions for your students. Uh, we do have some technical support available um, if you do have specific issues um, with using like a liquid syllabus um, or uh, a specific PDF, our support team is always happy to help. And then we are also happy to help. So all of my um, colleagues who have been helping me in the text chat today um, can also help you outside of the text chat. So if you want to set up a one-on-one -on -one instructional design consultation with your customer success manager hypothesis, you can email the address here and we will direct you to the correct person. So it could be me, maybe Becky, maybe Ashley, maybe someone else, but someone will be able to help you. Um, and then I also did link to our upcoming workshops that are coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, so if you do need to see that walkthrough in an LMS that's not Canvas, um, you can sign up for one of those workshops. So yes, I am going to email out the recording and the slide deck so you have access to all of the things that are here um, that will go out later today. All right, so Again, if anyone has questions, please make sure that you can reach out to the success team. 